and they saw God. I mean, who would to serve a God like this? There's no God like my God. He's absolutely awesome. Working wonders all the time. There's no God like my God. Before you take your seat, just look over at somebody. Amen. Let them see all 32 or two. Alright. Put a smile on your face and let them know I'm glad to see you today. In the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time. Put those hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Give us a little bit. Amen. You may have the seats. We glorify God. Amen for this. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad. Let me say that again. This is the day. I woke up a year older, but this is the day. Hallelujah. Can't move as fast as I used to, but this is the day. Middle aged and medicated, but this is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen. Hallelujah. These days have, are not promised. That's right. No. Hallelujah. It is of the Lord's mercies. And you all know miracles. To every time I come to this place, to this space. It's nostalgic for me because right across the street is where I used to smoke my best crack. Not only sell, but smoke. Amen. Right across the street. Where a group of, uh, of, of what they call them, something, a group of uh, brothers. <laughs> from Father Perry Village came oh and jumped me and beat me right in front of that house. Oh right across the street. Oh my God. The, I woke up to being punched in the face by the police as they raided the house. Oh my God. His mercy! Amen. He says he's going to write an autobiography. And, and I'm okay. 
okay with that. Just leave the Virginia travels out there. <laughs> you got to leave certain parts out there, you know. Because I was a silly kid back then. I was. <laughs> We had fun and I learned so much. Hallelujah. Even when it didn't seem like I was taking it in. Yes. Amen. He would look over and prophesy to me, my shabbies, and I'll be on the keyboard sh shaking my head, not me. Yes, he I don't know who you talk to. I got your back, I'll fight for you and all that stuff, but all the other stuff you're talking about. I don't know about that. But we thank God for the pastor. We thank God. For the pastors of this house, Pastor Pacheco. Amen. And, uh, good to see you, brother, in the house of the Lord, smiling. Amen. Amen. Pastor Eva. Amen. To Master Williams. Amen. To the living like a church mother. Amen. Amen. You look good. Amen, amen. We thank God for your mother, the Cordillian. Amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Let us be born. Give him a ring. Amen. amen. All right, all right, let me stop. I'm on the road. <laughs> amen to the, uh, I know your name, Pastor Sarah. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. amen. Amen to all of those of the household of faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Security person. Yes. 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 the floor. Yes. Amen. We want to bless you today. Yes. Amen. We bless you today. Yes. Yes. Amen. To those that have come from far and near to share with us. Amen. And so we got to acknowledge people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Got to give folk their accolades, their flowers while they can smell them, as they say. Yes. Certainly first to the mother of the work. She's the mother of my work. Amen. 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 If it wasn't for her, it'd be no me. Mr. Dix, amen. My chaplain and my adjutant. Amen. 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 We thank God for uh, 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 Apostle Holden. Amen. 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 Prophet. Amen. <laughs> a prophet. God is raising a prophet. To my bestest little girl, amen, Sister Sophia. Yeah. She's growing up to be such a beautiful young lady. Yeah. Amen, amen. And anyone that I forget, remember, I said I'm middle-aged and medicated, so. <laughs> amen. Please come it to my, God bless you. to my head and not to my heart. Yeah. Amen. I love you all, yes. but God loves you the best. Give yourself a hand because you're here. As we celebrate with you, Miracle Center, in your 14th church anniversary. And, uh, Pastor Howard sends her greetings. I was uh, check, checking in on her this week, you know, and I was reminding her about uh, your anniversary. She said, 14 years? That man been around right here. Amen. Pastor Hagers has been doing this a long time. Yes, he has. Amen. But 14 years of this work. Yes, Amen. Amen. 14 years with this work, we celebrate every milestone. Amen. Every touchstone. Yes, Lord. Amen. That God has allowed you all to accomplish as a ministry. Amen. Amen. This is a difficult time. Amen. Yes, it is. Uh, just in my short uh, 
little span of life, amen, to, for the church. Yes. Uh, and what the church is going through and having to pass the people uh, through these types of circumstances, yes. political and world, world events and uh, evolving in different ways of thought and spirituality. Uh, it's a challenging time. Yes, it is. It's a challenging time. And it is certainly a time for us to be filled with prayer. Mm -hmm. yes. It is a time for us to be filled with prayer. Yes. Uh, because regardless of what everyone else is doing, there is a need for us to be grounded yes. in what you believe. Yes. Uh, you have to be grounded in uh, where you stand in the mission and the ministry of your assigned designation. Yes, yes. I want to talk to you really quickly, uh, my version of quickly, uh, in Genesis chapter 11. Amen. This is a word, I, I preached this message years, a few years ago. Uh, not here, but I preached this message and it came back up in my spirit. And I uh, want to share some points of that with you and be out of your way. Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. And while you're turning to the uh, Genesis chapter 11. And we want to begin our reading at verse number 27. When we have it, say, I had it. If you're not there, you say, hold up, Bishop, I'm still swiping. <laughs> Genesis chapter 11. Begin our reading at verse 27. Uh, 27. Hear ye the word of the Lord, coming from the book of beginnings, verse 27. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Naor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Naor's wife, Melka, the daughter of Haran, the father of Melka, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. And, took, and Terah took Abram his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years. And Terah died in Haran. The word of God for the people of God. Bless be our God. Father, we thank you. We hallow this moment in this space. As we decrease, we pray and ask that you increase. Let your glory fill this space. Fill we, your people, with the glory and the light that you encouraged us to have through your word, that our light might shine before men, that they may see our work, but that you get all the glory. We pray, O oh God, that something is said and gleaned from the deposit that you make that will strengthen our lives to pursue our purpose with excitement and with trepidation. 
of your glory in the midst of us. We thank you for all the things that you've done for us thus far. And we are excited for what you're about to do. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes. Jesus, our Christ. Yes. All the people of God say amen. 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 You may rest your seats. I'm not going to, which I typically do is reread the word over again. I'm not going to do all that. But I want to give you the subject for uh, this afternoon. I want you to look at somebody and tell the neighbor, I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you're going through right now. But I want you to know today, God said it. There shall be a performance. If you believe that, you ought to shout, I believe there shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. To fully and truly comprehend what we've read so far, it would, we would have to reread it and read it slow and kind of pick it apart to try to keep up with everything that's transpiring. But if you pray for me, I'll try to explicate it uh, as quickly as I can. There is an old adage over Sia Higgins that says it's not how you start a thing, That's right. okay. but how you finish right. a thing. Right. Certainly our Bibles would read much differently if Joseph would have given up in the pit right. or the prison uh -huh. or before reaching the palace. Moses, after killing the Egyptian, it would have read, our Bible would read differently if Moses, after killing the Egyptian man, would have given up in the wilderness of Midian before ever leading a nation out of bondage. Our Bibles would read differently if Jonah would have given up in the belly of the fish. Or if Daniel would have given up in the face of those hungry lions. <laughs> what about the three Hebrew boys? Our Bibles would read much different. Minister Wing as if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have just given up while in the fiery furnace and just died. Jesus could have given up after he shouted, It is finished. But the fact of the matter is that it was not finished until the men declared, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? Because this same Jesus that you see ascending shall ascend in like manner. The record also states in confirming that for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and with, with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Yeah. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yeah. So our Bibles would have read totally different if just these few characters would have given up at the midpoint of their journey. But look at somebody and tell them there shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. <laughs> Our narrative picks up the patriarch terror, 
the father of Abram in the place called in a place called Ur of the Chaldees. Ur was known as being an idolatrous country. It was a wealthy place by worldly standards. However, from the spiritual standpoint, it was a country that was riddled with pagan worship. Their main god was called in all capitals S-I-N. And he was a moon god. Terah now being commissioned by God to relocate his family stops at what would be considered the halfway point geographically because uh, between where he was and where he was going. When God tells Terah, I'm about to place you and your entire family into a shift. Uh-huh. Has God ever interrupted your life? When you thought you were on your way somewhere, had another plan in mind, you had another trajectory in your view and designed for yourself, and all of a sudden, here comes God and shifts your direction. Because God realizes and God knows where you are now is not the place that you're supposed to give up. And for some of us, if we would have stayed just a little too long, too much longer, if we would have hung around the place where we were a little too long, amen, we would have given up. We would have died a slow death. There's nothing worse than dying and know that you're not dead. And some of you know, just like the I know, know some folk that are still attached to some things. They're acting like there's life there. They're acting like it's living there. Amen. But yet and still, you recognize when you stick a fork in that Thanksgiving turkey, it's not all the way done yet. Because as soon as something happens, they bleed too easily. Amen. They hurt too easily. They go around talking about church hurt, but they don't go around talking about work. Then I kind of like you alive. My God. And you're really dead. Well, yes. Please, 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 my brothers, my sisters, please get it in your spirit that the anointing that God is trying to produce for those of us that are in this shift yes. is not for our individual gain, but God says, I'm shifting things around so that I can bless you, so that I can anoint you, so that I
Amen. Amen. God has to transition us out of this place called Ur of the Chaldees. Ur is translated to mean the city of lights. But Sister Sarah, a more thorough translation reveals it uh, to be known as, as a city of fire. All right. Where God is shifting us from uh, is a place that we have been under fire. The church is under fire. Where you have been under persecution. God is saying, I've got to get you out of there because you've been suffering long enough. Do I have anybody today that realized that you've been, uh, been in this type of fire long enough? You've been suffering long enough. You've been fighting the same fights long enough. You've been telling yourself, this year is my year. This is my year for overflow. This is my season. But yet you see no tangible evidence. You're reminding yourself that weeping may endure for a night, but it seems like morning time will never come. You've been suffering long enough. God is saying, I'm shipping you out of this place where we've been under fire and moving us to the place of our destiny and our purpose. I know some of us can't shout about that just yet because you haven't been under that type of attack yet. You haven't been under fire like that yet. But there are a few of us here that realize that I have spent a whole lot of time, a whole lot of energy, and a whole lot of money sometimes trying to put out fires. Who am I talking to? Trying to do right, but there's a fire. Trying to live right, but there's a fire. Trying to treat everybody right, but there's another fire. Trying and declarations and declarations 
declarations and resolutions and all this. But, but, but this is not that. This is the place that God speaks of. It is the place where everything God has spoken concerning you shall be made manifest. Look at somebody and tell them there will be a performance.
they stop. Something happened. Look at somebody and tell them, just lean over to them and look over them and tell them, amen, tell them, don't get stuck. Halfway there.
move on. Terah is the father of Haran. Now, they stopped in a place called Haran. But Terah also had a son. Abraham, Abraham's brother, was also named Haran. Haran died in Ur of the Chaldees. So by the time they get to Haran, they're so emotionally drained. Physically drained for the journey, but mentally and emotionally drained at the loss. Come on. That when they get to this place that looks good and feels comfortable, they make a temporary stop their permanent location. Isn't it something how the stressors of life can cause you to misconstrue your vision? Because of what we go through eternally, because we've experienced loss, we experience people that die in our lives. And even Some of the places that you have to do 
commission or belief in one of the commendations that the angel uh, that uh, is being made to one of the churches. He's telling them, he says, uh, uh, you better learn and remember to strengthen what remains. <laughs> learn, you beloved, you better learn how to stop crying over spilled milk <laughs> and learn how to do an assessment of what you got. Yes. 
and that beautiful as it was, it was still a dry place. But even more specific to the, uh, to the etymology of the word, it didn't only mean dry, but it also mean horse, as in having a horse throat. I don't feel nothing. 
You know how we do, we do now. Everybody got all the gifts now. They got a few extra ones. Exaggerations. Amen. Prophet Tribe, Prophet Long. All those extras. But yet can't sense. Be sensitive. Hallelujah. Can I just tell you? Every move of God is not going to disrupt the chairs. Every move of God. I mean, that's good. Praise is good. The dance and all that stuff. All those things are good. Those are outward expressions of your grace and your gratitude towards God. Right? It's what we give to Him. What shall I render unto the Lord for all of His many benefits unto us? Amen. We lift up our hands. We wave our hands. We praise Him in a shout. In the dance. We scream out His voice. Our voices are lifted. Those are our outward expressions, watch this, of your inward relationship. The generals used to, used to evoke the move of God on just a waving of the hand. Just lift up the hand and the whole side of the church would just fall out with the glory. We just slap them. Inward, inward, inward conviction, the inward expression, and their worship yes. spilled over into their outward expression. Yes. We don't praise God to get God. Amen. Praise is what we do as a result of our acknowledgement in relationship to God. Yeah, that's right. We are worshipers. Oh, I'm going to church to get my praise on. You got your wrong intent. That's right. That's right. I'm going to the house of God that I might worship Him yeah. with people of like spirit. My inheritance are among those who are sanctified, yeah. just like me, have gone through, just like me, that have triumphed and travailed, just like me. Watch this and get ready to sit down. Those that go to Bible study, just like me. Those to show up for prayer meeting, just like me. How do you never come to prayer meeting but want to show up and tear up the church on Sunday? I ain't saying you can't pray at home, but every now and then something ought to say, I gotta be connected to my brother and my sister. And that's more than just in the fellowship. The fellowship gathering. It's the intimacy of that. Yeah. It's in how we embrace and call on God collectively. Miracle Center, stay together. Yeah. 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 If nothing else, this year should be a year that you make a commitment to be more connected than you ever been before. If nothing else, be more connected. I'm not saying you gotta join every ministry. Pastor Higgins got like 27 ministries. I ain't saying you gotta be all over. Find something to do. Whatever you find, if you can be 100% committed to one, I'm sure you'll be happy. Amen. Stop giving God 50% of 15 different things. Find something you can be totally committed to. Hallelujah. Find something. Because you know what? God will always take care of his ministry. It's his work. He'll take care of the rest. He'll take care of the, the, the vision and all the spaces that need to be filled and all that stuff. You work with what where you are. Until God can bring you up to do that. Amen. I'm done. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this people. God, we trust and believe today 
that there shall be a performance of those things that you have spoken concerning us and more succinctly what you have spoken concerning this ministry. We thank you, God, that through many dangers, toils, and snares, that the church of God is still standing. Because your word says that upon this rock you'll build your church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. The weapons have formed, oh God, but they not have not triumphed over, over us. And so we give you the glory for the victory. We give you the glory for the success. We give you the glory for the accomplishment. We give you the glory, oh God, for overcoming those things that would have knocked us backwards. We thank you. We're not going to stop halfway there. We're not going to be comfortable where we are. But we're going to continue to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in your son Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. We thank you, God, that the victory belongs to the saints. The victory belongs to the church. The victory belongs to your people. We are your people. And you are our God. We thank you, God, we're coming out of where we've been with our praise with us. Yeah. Giving you all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we give you plenty of praise. Put those hands together right where you are and bless God.